I would like you to imagine a really, really tall apple tree. And on one of the branches, we have an apple. Now, perhaps the apple decided to fall off. What we can look at is the motion of this object under gravity. And we're going to have a look at this, maybe one case of terminal velocity. First of all, what I'd like to think about is the instant that this apple falls off that tree. Now, effectively, what we're talking about is uh, the point where suddenly this branch is no longer providing an upwards force which keeps this in the air. So I'm just going to get rid of that branch. So the instant, you know, sort of time is zero, that this thing begins to fall, there's only one force acting on this apple. And the force uh, is not gravity, although gravity causes this force. The force downwards is the weight of that apple. I have here then the resultant force which is acting upon that apple. And this is just due to the weight of the object. And this is going to cause a downwards motion. And there's going to be an acceleration because we have unbalanced forces. So this is basically the first step in the journey of the apple. Now, after a small amount of time, you know, a fraction of a second, the weight of that apple will not change. It doesn't get heavier as it falls to the, to the earth. But what it's doing now, it's moving with some certain velocity. And when you have an object which is moving with a velocity, there's also an associated drag force. And this drag force is going to be acting in the upwards direction. And I'm going to label that D. Now, what we can see is that at this time here, uh, the weight is bigger than the drag force. So the value of the weight is bigger than the drag. And therefore, there's still going to be a resultant force which is acting downwards. But we can see now that the resultant force is smaller than before. And therefore, this object, which again has a constant weight and a constant mass, the acceleration is going to get smaller. If we think about uh, a short amount of time later, and imagine this is a really high tree, so it's long enough for the apple to fall down and reach its terminal velocity. What we find after even more time is that, the, again, the weight of the object doesn't change. But it's going to move faster and faster until the size of the weight is equal to the drag force. Remember, we have an acceleration here which makes it go faster. When we have a greater velocity, we also have a greater drag force. And at this stage here, what we find is that the weight is equal to the drag force, but they're in opposite directions. And this means that the resultant force is zero. And therefore, this object is in equilibrium. So it's still moving, it's just not accelerating. And this is what we call its terminal velocity. We can also look at this in a sort of graphical way where I'm going to use a VT graph. And effectively, at time uh, is zero, there's no velocity uh, when it initially starts to move off. As time goes on, though, the velocity gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what we get is a graph that looks a bit like this. Now, the important thing to note is that because the resultant force is going to be proportional to the acceleration of that object and the acceleration uh, on a VT graph uh, is equal to the gradient at any point, then we can basically look at the steepness of the gradient here and see how that relates to our resultant force. So initially, we have a steep gradient. And actually, if we were to measure this uh, at this kind of uh, stage here, the gradient would be equal to a value of about 9.81 meters per second squared, which is acceleration g due to gravity. As time goes on though, and we maybe look at this uh, point when it's been falling for a while, it's, it's got faster and faster, we have a slightly uh, shallower gradient and therefore the acceleration gets less. As time goes on until this point here where the weight is equal to the drag, the gradient of this graph is zero and that means there's no acceleration. And again, it's this point here that we call the terminal velocity. Remember, terminal sort of means uh, the end. Uh, for example, maybe an airport ter terminal is at the, the end of your, your journey. So basically, this is the end velocity of, uh, of this object. So terminal velocity, uh, we can think about in terms of falling objects. If we have a parachutist, maybe under free fall, then we know that their weight is equal to their drag force, and therefore they're moving at this constant downwards velocity. But it doesn't just have to be things which are falling. We might think about maybe a diver moving up to the surface of the water. Now, in this case, we would have, because they're moving upwards perhaps, there'd be an up thrust, which is causing them to move up. And this is uh, counteracted by their water resistance, or in this case, the drag, which is acting in the downwards direction. So we can think about things going down, things going up, and also we can consider things which are moving along. So perhaps you have a vehicle. Now again, this vehicle might have some forward velocity, uh, and there might be uh, maybe thrust, which is driving it forward. Uh, you know, this is uh, provided by the engine, but acting against that, we have, again, the, the air resistance and the drag force. And provided the forwards force is equal to the rearwards force, this object is just going along at a constant velocity. 
So terminal velocity is about objects moving in a fluid where there, are, where there is no resultant force because the drag force is balanced by the other force.